it was on our own land that those two men were captured. And uh, my, my father's cousin, Thomas Miles McCabe, was uh, the first Sinn Féin councillor elected from the area at the time, who uh, survived on until 1963, and I knew him quite well, and he gave me a lot of history of it. And uh, he told me as well of those two men, and uh, Matty Hogan, a brother of Seamus. Seamus was a volunteer who was shot by the British soldiers in Old Castle in uh, July, 20, July the 21st, 1920. And it was his brother, Matty, whose uh, son was a doctor here in Cool. And uh, Matty was a staunch Republican, still remained till the day he died, and was at all the fun, the, the fundraising functions for the Republican movement in this uh, campaign, this last campaign. And he told me that he said he was quite willing to take a stack of Bibles or stand on them and swear that he was present at the meeting. And the meeting was held in a public house in Old Castle. It was Broder's public house in Cavan Street. It is now a laundry mat or a dry cleaner's. And he said that he told me that he was present at it when it was sanctioned by the IRA that the robbery was sanctioned by that, that meeting, and that there was to be a man to cut the wires leading from Old Castle, to be in charge of it. Not necessarily that he personally was to cut all four of them, but to be in charge of it, to appoint people to do so. And there was to be a car on the street to take them away when they stepped out on the street. And they were to go out the Millbrook Road, and there they were to meet two women who were to be walking into the Old Castle, two girls. And uh, they were to take the money and the, the guns and bring them back into Old Castle. But when those two young men stepped out on it, there was no one. There was no car. The bank officials had made contact already by phone during the actual robbery to the military barracks in Kells and Mullingar, in, in uh, Virginia, all over. And they were already on their way. So they were descending in from all directions. They were descending north, south, from east, all directions. East, west, yeah. And uh, the men have no local knowledge. As you see, Michael Greeley was from Athenry in County Galway. And Leo Burke was from Cady in County Armagh. And uh, they did work in Graces, which is now Gibneys in Old Castle. The Graces were a great Republican family. And... Uh, they employed uh, people, soldiers or uh, Republicans who needed a bit of time to recover and recuperate and they had them as a cover in the shop and they, they might work occasionally. In it. So they went up this moat lane, which is a long lane going up really to nowhere and leads into the fields in Crossroom. And they, uh, they crossed what was known as the Black Stick. Now the Black Stick was only... a a large tree that had been blown over the river at a narrow point. But some of the roots were retained in the bank and it kept growing, really. So a lot of them, including myself, I often crossed it. You just walked across this bit of a stick across the river. It was a narrow point. And they crossed there and crossed into Crossroom. Now, Crossroom estate wasn't invited. <coughs> this was in 1923. Crossroom Estate wasn't divided until 1945. So there was no houses on the Black Road. And they were all big, massive fields. You know, 50, 60, 80 acres and some of them. And if you go to the Upper Moat Road and look down on Crossroom Lower, you can see them. It's like shooting ducks in a barrel. And that is where the Kells Company came to saw them, the boys moving across these open fields and, of course, surrounded them. And they were caught, actually, at the little wood in Crossroom. They were actually in the townland of Moat, but only by about ten yards. Now, I knew a man quite well, Paddy Clark. He was a young lad at that time. But uh, Paddy was working with Thomas Roddy's widow, Bridgie. And he told me that he saw the two men above at the corner of the wood smoking. He was only about a 12-year-old boy. And he wanted to go up to ask them for a cigarette. 
and he was on his way up when the soldiers came in all directions and ran past him and he ran back out into the house. They brought them there from there, they captured them, and they marched them out the little lane that I live on, out the church road and up the Tully Road, past Castlecore Bridge and into Old Castle. And they more or less triumphantly displayed them at the market house in Old Castle. But they were brought from there to Trim, and from Trim they were transferred to Mullingar, and they had this military court, and we know the rest, they were sent to the dead. Mm. But you only really have to read any of their last letters to see that they were anything but criminals. Mm -hmm. They were very pious religious men who were true soldiers of the Irish Republic, there's no question about that, and who served it without fear or favour. And uh, in my opinion, it was a great pity to have them condemned as common criminals. And this was the way that it was. Now, uh, there's an argument, all right, that uh, Liam Lynch had issued an order in February of that year that bank robberies were to cease. That we do know. But now, whether that order had actually filtered down to those men or not, I can't be sure. I wasn't there. But it certainly was sanctioned by the IRA, and those men were carrying out orders. Mm. And Matty Cogan, God rest Matty now, he asked me above in Cross the Keel, at a, fun, a fundraising function that was up there, he asked me, he said, told me about it, and he told me, he said, it's this terrible thing that was done to those, terrible injustice that was done to those two men, and to try to clear their names. He said, you're a young man. I was that time. This is 40 odd years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said to try to clear their their names. And I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to be involved with Peter Rogers and Alan McCabe or anyone else that is going to, and yourself of course, 